Okay, let's go. The best funnel to get more clients as a videographer, if you're growing a videography business, as a freelancer, or you're growing a video production company at any point. This is what we've used to change over the years. Now, first of all, a funnel. I didn't know what this was for years, and very simply put, it looks like this, so you can see it's the uh, same as a, an actual funnel that if you were gonna pour something through it, that's what we wanna do, but we wanna pour clients through the top of it, and they fall through this kind of hyper superficial funnel thing okay which is which is down here so it usually ends up having lots of different layers and at each point of these funnel layers is a potential point where there will be some kind of conversion or clients will fall off so if you put a hundred clients in the top of this funnel when they get to stage two which might be the sales stage maybe only 50 of them actually come through that point and move on to the next stage. And I'll explain these stages in a minute, as well as we'll develop our own one as well for, um, uh, for videographers. At the next stage, there might be 30 people left in that funnel, all the way through until potentially, you know, maybe there's just 10 people and then maybe just one person. What this helps you do is to identify pitfalls in your business. So, if, for instance, it looked like this, you had 100 people on that first stage of the funnel, and that went down to 50, but then it stayed at 50 all the way through, that'd be nice, wouldn't it, 50 clients, then you would know that actually, that's an ideal world and very unrealistic, number one, but there's probably a problem with this point of the funnel, because people aren't converting at a higher percentage here. So you want as many people who enter the funnel to come out the bottom end of the funnel because the bottom end is a sale and a sale at the end of the day is what we all need to grow our business now you're probably thinking what the hell are all of these lines i understand what a funnel is but what makes up these points of a funnel so it is made up of these points we've got awareness in the top awareness you have to excuse my hand ryan by the way i'm sure you understand um interest Desire, and then action. Awareness is your sales and marketing. That is your ability to get people to look at your business and notice you, and notice what it is that you do. Interest is the people, and I've explained this about a shop before, these are the people who actually uh, are shown interest. They might fill out a lead form on your website, they might sign up to a mailing list, they might um, have a conversation with you at a networking event, they might send you an email, or it might be that you're having a conversation with them, so you've gone out to them and actually said, hey, I think we'd be a really good fit, and they've entertained the idea. They're interested in what you've got to sell. Then they start to build up that desire, and that's kind of where you're kind of offering your understanding of their problems and, and your solution, which is video production, how that can actually help them. And that's where it builds up more of a desire, because they might say, well, you know, I walk into a shop, and you don't necessarily know what it is you're gonna buy. You might be browsing, you might just be looking, okay, and that's what these businesses are doing. They might think that they know they need video, but really they probably what they're thinking is, I need to get more leads for my business, or I need to get noticed, I need to get my name out there. They're not necessarily thinking, I need a video to get my name out there, we need to convert them, okay. So then when you come along and then you say, hey, we do videos and we're really good at like helping businesses get their name out there, they go, that's funny, that's exactly what I was looking for. Then you start to build up that desire and say, you know, we've done this for these people and that's where having a niche and your case studies comes really important. And you start to build up that desire, you maybe make them an offer and that's not always a financial offer by the way, it could be a guarantee, it could be a solution based offer, anything like that. Then we want them to take action. We want them to go, yeah, great, you're the perfect guy. This is, this is great time and I wanna go with you. How much is it? Yeah, great, wonderful, take my money. That's what we want. And that funnel, as they come through, is made up of a lot more detail. And that's what we'll break into over this video a little bit more, is actually developing what our own funnel looks like for our production company and how this can apply to all kinds of filmmakers out there as well to get a better understanding of how you can make more sales. Okay, so top of funnel, the top part is the awareness. How do they even know you exist to begin with? Awareness is hard but simple <laughs> and that really comes into marketing 
Um, and we also then have outbound sales as well and kind of putting yourself in those positions. So I describe this as inbound and outbound marketing. Okay, I'll just put I and O for now. So inbound is when someone comes to you and they're interested, usually because you've posted some content, they love it, or you've put out an advert, then they come into you. And then outbound is when you actually go to them. And I kind of liken that to going to networking events, turning up at trade shows, and actually like marketing yourself to them and having conversations with businesses. You're outwardly going out there, out of your way to kind of bring them into this funnel. And that awareness is quite simple in that sense. We're gonna think about things such as, where are your ideal customers spending most of their time on social media? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on TikTok, Instagram, um, Threads, X, whatever it is, what's the latest thing? Where are your clients based and positioned? If they're an older generation, they might not be on those newer ones necessarily. So once we've got an understanding of that, we wanna start thinking about a marketing strategy around that. Are we doing things for free where we're posting daily, we're doing story highlights, behind the scenes content, showcasing previous work that we've already done? Or are we gonna go down a paid ads route and pay Facebook and Instagram or Snapchat or whoever it is a bit of money to run some ad campaigns and bring someone on for that? If you're more of an established business, I would go down that route if you've got a bit of money to spend. Get in a professional whose job it is to solely run ads uh, because they'll do a much better job than you will on your own. But also utilize these free methods as well. You know, posting regularly, showcasing your work. They're things that will still create a bit of a buzz. Get involved with local businesses and local events, local trade shows, fairs, things that are happening within your community because you've already built up a bit of a rapport because you're in that environment. Okay, so there's a shared connection there. I have become a father a couple of years ago and one of my most favorite rapport building strategies is to talk about kids. Most of our clients have already got kids, so when I join them, I generally say, oh, you know, have you got kids? I've got a little two-year-old, and we have a chat about that, and it breaks down all of these barriers. We call it an icebreaker, and that's a really great rapport builder for those later stages of sales. So awareness is all about your marketing strategy, what that looks like, and I would think about posting on those uh, platforms quite regularly. Um, you might want to get printed in a magazine or a local newspaper. Personally speaking, I think we're digital. We should be creating videos on our business and showcasing how people can use that because there's some irony between receiving a local newspaper with a video production advert on it. Does your business need video? Uh, you kind of wouldn't be using that strategy. So awareness is top of funnel, that's the marketing stuff. That's the stuff that you're probably really good at doing for other people, just need to apply it to, to yourself. So now interest is when you've captivated some of those eyes, you've sparked some interest, what now? And what happens here between awareness and interest in this funnel is a conversion. That person has moved, because they're people here, right? They move from that point of the funnel into the next point of interest. So when you get a drop-off rate, let's say 10,000 people have seen my post about our video production company, but we don't have one lead generated. Then you need to ask yourself the question, what's happened here? Why haven't they converted? Was, am I talking to the wrong audience? Am I targeting the wrong people? Um, am I putting out the wrong kind of content? That's what you want, where you wanna look at, and that's why those lines are really the analytical points of, of your business. And that's what makes this work and makes it successful for us. So through this interest phase, we're actually trying to create more of a desire. So awareness, we're trying to create an interest. Interest, we're trying to create a desire. And a desire, we're trying to create an actual sale, an actual action, okay? So throughout interest, we've kind of generated that, but now we're looking to move them throughout this funnel. So this is where things like show reels, case studies, examples of your work, examples of success stories, client testimonials, all of these things need to be to hand at your business at any one point. So when you're emailing someone or having a conversation with someone, you can say, I'll send you over some examples of our work. Yeah, that would be great. Or, um, oh, it worked really well for this business that we did work for. Let me show you, uh, you know, our PDF if you don't mind. I'll send that over to you and you can see what, how that transformed their business. We're starting to create more of a desire. We're starting to create that thing of, oh yeah, actually I really wanted to get my name out there and I can see video would help me in that. 
But now I'm starting to understand how you can do that specifically for me with my problem in my industry, okay? And that desire is built in our production company by this, by doing a PDF pitch deck. So like a, a five page thing on like what we actually do as our business and then how we've helped other businesses showing some case studies and testimonials. Also showreel. Now I'm gonna be honest, Show reels aren't anywhere near as powerful as they used to be. Really saturated market. Everyone's got a show reel. What businesses want to see is examples. And examples of their actual business as well. You know, their industry. They want to see industry examples. And if you say, well, I don't have any examples of that industry at the moment, you might want to lean on the fact that your experience and your track record can repeat itself here. But what we've done in the past is we just offer some people a couple of free videos or some half price videos because it reduces the risk. It enables us to build up a portfolio within that industry and that's how you end up with multiple niches so that you can have a diverse portfolio. But when I'm talking to someone in the automotive sector, I've got examples, I've got a PDF. When I talk to someone in construction, I've got examples, I've got a PDF. It makes the sales process so much more tailored to that person, builds up that desire more, makes them really feel like that they are uh, being listened to and you're the right fit for their business. What I'd love to know from you guys is, are you enjoying this video? Are you happy with the iPad stuff at the moment? I'm just testing it out. I think it's really nice. I'm such a visual learner. I like writing stuff down. Obviously, my handwriting's a little bit sloppy, but hopefully you're enjoying it. If not, let me know in the comments. Would you prefer graphics? Would you prefer nothing at all? Would you prefer um, iPad stuff, whiteboard stuff? I'd love to know so we can create better content that's more engaging for you as well. So moving on to the next point, which is their decision making and it's their desire. You know, we've, we've started to build up their desire already or we have done. Now we need to get them to make a decision and move into the actual taking action. So again, at every stage of this, we're moving from that kind of awareness to interest to now the decision. And at each line, you have drop-offs, okay? So you have drop-offs here, and you need to analyze why those people didn't convert. Are you speaking to the wrong people? And at the point of trying to create this desire, if, if your conversations don't go any further, then you need to understand, okay, maybe was it not the right fit? Did you not have a portfolio in that area? And if that's causing you to have a low conversion rate, then that might be something where you want to, again, consider one of those strategies that I mentioned. So in desire, we're really wanting them to take action and then the action leads them onto actually being a paying client for you. And at the end of this video, I'm also gonna share with you my own personal funnel so you can understand exactly how this works for us too. Now, each one of these stages of the funnel could easily be a 40 minute video in itself. So I'm gonna try and summarize while still providing as much value as possible. Now, in order for someone to make a decision, they're gonna be kind of thinking about three things on this triangle. One is gonna be time, Two is gonna be quality, three is gonna be price, okay, or budget. Where does this actually fit in with how much they're willing to spend? And this kind of sales triangle is something that you need to master within your own business and your own clientele and the position of your business, depending on how much you're charging, how quick you can turn things around. So for instance, our team turns most things around within like a week because we've got a team of people here to, to facilitate that. We've got the resources, the quality is high as well, and then also the budget is high. So they're the conversations we need to have. And if someone comes to you and they say, look, I want you to create a video for us, but we've got a low budget, so we don't have a budget, but I want it to be really good and I want it to be done quickly, it's not gonna be possible. You can't produce a really high quality video on a low budget and you certainly can't do it quickly. But they might say to you, well, we love your work, we want this video to look amazing, we've got the budget to match it and uh, they also want it done quickly, then you say, well, okay, the, there's gonna be some problems here because we can't produce high quality quick. It needs to take its time. So we always ask the question here to get them through this buying process of what do you want to, us to prioritize? Is it budget? Is it quality? Is it time? What do you want us to prioritize? And they often go, Ross, we want you to do all three. And we go, yeah, great, great you're so funny. Uh, no, but really, what do you want us to prioritize? Because we can't do everything. You know, if you've got a low budget, where are we at? So budget's a good thing to talk about first. And we just say, you know, what, what budget are we working with? Are we working with $5,000 you know, or pounds for us, 10,000, 15,000, 20, or 1,000? You know, we're gonna have a very different conversation based on 
that answer. And I try to bring that up now quite soon in our uh, conversations because otherwise we could be talking about producing this amazing video and we're wasting all of our time because then they say the budget's really low. So I just ask them, what budget do you have in mind for this project? Once they reveal that, let's say they say it's $5,000, then we can then start to talk about, okay, well, what's achievable within that? How quickly do you need it? Well, Ross, we actually need it in three weeks time. Okay, fine. Well, you're not going to get the premium, premium, premium quality service. We're going to actually have to put our resources and some of that budget into getting this done quickly. And we're not going to be able to you know, achieve that. It's a much nicer way to actually show them that buying process and let them make the decision. So they walk away from it feeling like they've made the right decisions. And it hasn't been you just saying, we can't do it quickly. We can't do it good. We need more money. You know, that's a nicer process to take them through. And that's how we then take them from having that desire. They've, they've understood, we've caught their attention. We've generated some interest in what we do. They think it's the right fit for their business. We've created that desire by showing them actually examples of uh, other people's work. And now we're moving them into this buy-in phase. They're, if they're talking about price, if they're talking about time, if they're talking about these two, even though they want to focus on quality, if they're talking about these, they're ready to buy. And a key to, point here is don't sell past the point of sale. Once they say, yeah, we'd like to get you in probably like in, in next week to do this, or yeah, we're happy to go ahead with that. Don't start to keep trying to sell them. I made that mistake. I've lost a lot of deals because I started to say, oh, that's brilliant, yeah, yeah, we'll get you booked in, yeah, amazing, yeah, and this video is going to be really good because we can do this, and, and and it just, honestly, they just start to go, actually, do you know what, yeah, let me just have a quick think about it, I've just got to ask so-and-so about it, yeah, yeah, but a second ago, they were ready to buy, so make sure you're aware, if they're talking about time, if they're talking about budget, then they're pretty good to start, start closing that deal, and then that's when they become a client, that's when you can start getting some money into your business. And this is the funnel that, that you should follow to help you achieve that. I promise you guys I would show you what our funnel looks like. And it's really simple. Anyone can make something complicated. It's making it simple is the hard bit. So at the top here, we've got our sales and marketing, obviously, to build out our awareness. And for us, we're doing things here like um, going networking. Um, we are doing posting. We're actually quite bad at posting because we're doing outreach for the mo most part. And for us, outreach, um, uh, I'm going to stop scribbling down on here because this isn't probably making much sense. Um, outreach for us, we're, we're heavily invested into sales at the moment and outbound stuff, like I mentioned previously. That's why we've kind of um, actually um, gone less into marketing. But they're the, they're the three main areas that, that we look at doing. Then when we're talking about kind of the interest uh, phase, um, really it's our track record. We guide people over to our website and we also want them to book a call with us. We want them to actually say, yep, yeah, I'm happy to have like a brainstorming session with you for free. Let's jump on that. That generates a bit more interest. Have a look at our website in the meantime. Then when we move on to this final point, well, sorry, before the final point, we start to send them out a PDF where we all on that call, we start to showcase how this has worked for people within their industry we show the success stories we show what we do as a business we talk them through our process so they can see how we're different to other production companies that really starts to make the decision a no-brainer which then co converts them into that sales strategy like i just said with the triangle we take them through that process of what do you want us to prioritize here when are you ready to go let's get the date in let's move them on and then that's how we land them onto that client one step further from that because we always do a one-off project with them. So we do the project with them. We go and film them. We make sure they're happy. We make sure they're the right fit. After that one-off project, we sign them onto an RCP, which stands for regular content plan. Every business in the world can benefit from regular content. The algorithms with all social media platforms, um, they reward those people who post regularly by allowing them to reach wider audiences. But it's important that the content is good. And our regular content plans enable us to work with a client, not just once or twice or three times a year, but often up to 12 times or more a year, plus they're contracted as well. So we know exactly how much money we've got coming in every month, so we can create a profitable videography business with a predictable cash flow. Because if you don't have a predictable cash flow, how can you invest tens of thousands of pounds into equipment if you don't know how much money you've got coming in every month? That's a dangerous place to be in. So we sign them up onto those. And again, like any one of these points, I could do a whole long hour long training session on each of these. 
particularly with the RCP system. We've already recorded a free training event. If you click the link below, it's pre-recorded. I say that in the video as well. I'm not one of these people that's like, hey, it's a live session every 15 minutes. Like clearly it's not. We've taken it from a live session. We've condensed it down. We tell you how to find leads. We give you our sales scripts. We take you through that process on how to sign people onto these regular content plans. So go and check that out if you're interested in growing your business, having regular income. And if you kind of feel a bit stuck at the moment in your business, you just can't seem to unlock that next level and you can't seem to grow it further, you feel a bit just like, can't. it just seems harder than it should be, then take a look at this video. I break down loads more strategies that will help you really identify some of the key uh, problem areas that I faced in growing my production company from a desk in my parents' living room to where I am today with a team of people working on amazing projects all over the world. So take a look at that. Really wish you the best. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed. Till next time. Peace.